are millennials doomed? <laughs> Right, I am excited to talk about this one because I feel like there is so much hate out there for my millennial brother. And everyone is saying, you know what? Millennials are doomed. The future does not look bright for them. Man, they got just an awful run of things. And I just do not accept that. I do not believe that that's true. Now, look, despite what the comments say, I am not a boomer. <laughs> but I did think it is very important that we actually break down what are the challenges, what are the myths that are portrayed out there in the public mm-hmm. sphere, and what is the actual reality so that people can actually know their path forward. And look, we know that the things are difficult out there, so we're not going to sugarcoat this. We're going to talk about the actual things that might make wealth building difficult for millennials, but we wanted to, we want to separate the truths from the actual myths, so that that way you have good, actionable information that you can use. And I don't want young people feeling like they can't accomplish something. That's right. I think there is still so much. I'm an optimist naturally, and I want all of you guys to be optimists, because optimist is where success lies. And that's what I don't want somebody giving you all of the negatives without the context so you can navigate to become the best version of yourself. All right, Brian, let's talk about this very first myth. Here's myth number one. Millennials won't have any money at retirement. They are destined to be destitute. All right, Brent, why does this myth exist? Why is this something the public believes to be true right now? Well, I mean, think about it. We Here's where the, the cold hard facts are. Unfortunately, 66% of millennials have absolutely nothing in their retirement accounts mm-hmm. with their employer. That is a sad Fact. Yeah, and I think and let's go ahead and qualify the ages. When we talk about millennials, we're talking about folks right now, present day, that are age 27 to 42. So all of the 27 to 42 year olds out there, two thirds of them, 66% of them, have absolutely nothing saved for retirement. That is daunting. That is negative. That does not suggest that this generation is moving and heading in the right path. Despite this being such a sad fact that the majority of millennials are not saving for retirement yet, they have a tremendous superpower Mm -hmm. that's sitting in the background waiting for them just to tap in. And that's the component of time, which is actually the most valuable component. When we talk about the three ingredients of wealth creation, we talk about discipline, Mm -hmm. we talk about building money, and then the time that it takes for that money to work for you. Time is the most valuable resource. And millennials, fortunately for you, it was back to the 27 to 42, mm-hmm. that is young enough that there's a lot of catch-up opportunity. And so I said, okay, if you are starting at zero right now, if you're starting at zero, how much as a millennial from 27 to 42 would you need to start saving right now so that by the time you get to retirement, you could replace 80% of your pre-retirement income? And look at this. This is how time can be so powerful. For the 27-year-olds, for the ones that are on the very edge of the millennial spectrum, if you just started saving 14% right now of your gross wages, there's a high likelihood by the time that you get to retirement, to age 65, you would be able to replace 80% of your pre-retirement income. If you happen to be one of the older millennials and you are 42 years old and you've not saved anything, you are starting at zero, you can still get to financial independence, but it's going to be a little bit harder. You'd have to save 41% of your gross income in order to be able to replace 80% of your pre-retirement income by the time you get to retirement. Well, I think we have a broad range there, 14% all the way up to 41%. We actually have a free deliverable. If you go to moneyguy.com slash resources, you can see we actually recommend 25%. Yep. And the reason we can recommend 25% is look at what this deliverable shows you. Is if you can, if you are under 40 years of age, lots of yep. opportunity for that 25% to work for you. So go download that. But here's the biggest takeaway. Do something. That's right. The lion's share of you are under the age that 25% is going to change your life and create incredible financial independence, let you live life beyond your wildest dreams, but you've got to start somewhere. Just do something today. That's right. You have to do something. But then that actually leads, Brian, to the second myth that we want to dispel. And listen to this. Okay, guys, I hear you. You're saying just do something. But myth number two is that millennials, we don't even make enough money 
to be able to save and invest, even though we might have a desire and we understand how powerful time can be, we just don't have the income to make it happen. Now, look, once again, there's a kernel of truth. And if you look at the stats on this, we actually pulled the household income for millennials, household income for everybody else out there. And you did you do find that $69,000 is the household income for millennials. Mm -hmm. It's 97, close to $98,000 for all U.S. households. That looks behind the curve on income in the yeah, household. On, but there the are some things, some some facets that actually give relief on this. What are those, Bob? Yeah, here's when you actually look at the statistics, the majority of millennials, 56%, are non-married. So that means that a lot of these households for millennials are single income households. When we look at all U.S. households, those are households. A lot of those are double income. So a lot of these millennials, even though the household income may not be where the U.S. average household is, if you think about two millennials getting married or coming together in some sort of partnership, the numbers actually aren't that bad. They're not that low. And I would argue that at $69,000 of a median household income, even saving a little bit, just starting to do something, not a ton, but just starting to do something can have a huge impact because of exactly what we said in myth number one, you have time on your side. Well, it goes beyond just Bo's gut. The numbers actually show the exact same thing. If you look at this slide is what do you need to save and invest to become a millionaire by age? It actually shows a very little bit can go a extremely long way in the snowballing or the exponential growth that you can do if you just harness the power of compounding growth. Yeah, if you want to be a millionaire by the time you get to 65 and you are on the on the early young age of millennials, you're a 27-year-old, you need to be saving about $236 a month in order to get to millionaire status. If you wait until 42 and you're that millennial who hasn't saved anything at age 42, you can still get to millionaire status by 65, but it's going to be a little bit harder work. you got to save $1,300 a month. But if you think about that, just saving $1,300 a month for roughly the next 20 years can get you to a million dollars. Time, even if you're in your 40s, is still incredibly valuable. We know that for a 40-year-old, $1 has the opportunity to turn into $7 by the time that you get to retirement. So do something today and then get better at continuing to save that money and put it away. I also want to challenge the millennials out there watching this because it is, it, it's easier to go create a little extra side income mm -hmm. too because we just showed you $200 of investments a month could put you on the pathway to becoming a millionaire. So think about with all the gig economy mm -hmm. options now, it's, it's somewhat easier easier in a lot of ways because back in the day like i remember when my mom was a, a school teacher all of her her friends that were trying to run the holidays would have to go work at walmart or do something else like that you had to, to actually a part -time go job, a part-time job. job apply now you kind of do it on your terms when you have a little extra time you can go turn the app on to make mm -hmm. a little extra money you can deliver stuff there are ways and two hundred dollars three hundred dollars i think that is a margin low enough that a little bit goes a long way. I think what happens with millennials is we get discouraged. Oh, I hear you guys say that I need to be saving 25%, but I just can't do it. And because I can't do the absolute best that I could be doing, I yeah. don't do anything at all. Don't fall into that trap. If all you can save is $20 a month, great, start doing that. Figure out how you can go from 20 to 25. And then how can I go from 25 to 50 and 50 to 100? And if you can have that mindset, you will be amazed at what your dollars can do for you if you will just start the process today. Yeah, let's move on. I want to talk about the third myth. Uh -huh. Now, this one hurts a little bit. But the third myth is millennials can't afford Homes. Yeah, Oof. I feel like this is one we hear a lot, and, and and for I don't want to say rightly so, but we hear this a lot, and we know that right now home ownership is tough. If you look at the statistics right now, only forty three percent of millennials own a home presently. When you compare that to all U.S. households, about seventy three percent of all U.S. households own homes. Only forty three percent of millennials. So you would arrive at the conclusion. Man, it must be more difficult for millennials to buy homes than other generations, but I don't know that that's perfectly telling the exact well, accurate story. I mean, I don't mind giving the credence that, yes, it is It is a tough time. We, we saw that the age of millennials is 27 to 42. We know that the average age for a first-time home buyer is now 36. Mm -hmm. That's kind of square right there, you know, where the, the lion's share is going to be below 
that age. That's and why right. is a that number? Aren't and, there yet. and why is it up two thirty six? Is because we just came through an inflationary period. Mm-hmm. With now we have high interest rates. We just had houses go way up in value. It is a tougher time. I'm not going to minimize that in this decision, but I think there might be some things coming our way that could potentially mitigate this. But yeah, I think while it, it has been tough, that does not suggest that it will always be tough and it will stay tough. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of folks have been trapped in their current mortgages. You know, they refinanced a number of years ago and they have two and a half, three and a half, four percent mortgages. Well, if we start to see interest rates come down and we start to see some reprieve there, not only will affordability of houses become better because interest rates have dropped. But maybe some of those folks that are locked into their current house will start selling those. And if we have increased inventory of homes, it will also drive down the prices, increase the supply of homes, so that if you are a millennial trying to get into the home, there may be some things over the next couple of years that might make it a little bit easier, a little bit more possible for you to do that. Whereas in these past two or three years, maybe it's been a little bit less possible to make Since that Since we have, we've been very transparent. It's it's harder in for this sure. aspect. So yep. this is why it's going to show preparation is actually going to be your friend. And if you guys need some free, resor- re- free resources on this, if you go to moneyguy.com slash resources, not only do we have like a home buying checklist, mm-hmm. we'll cover that in a minute, but we also have a brand new calculator so you can actually put in your numbers to see what type of housing you Mm -hmm. can afford and maybe if it's not perfect right now because right now there is this discussion or decision is is it a better time to rent than it is Mm -hmm. to own and it varies by markets it varies by what your income and your career and everything else there's a lot of things that you can go in and change and it will change the answer to the question but at least now you have a tool Mm -hmm. that will help you navigate that what i love about this tool is it allows you to see if you squeeze the balloon where does the air go? If I were to think about, okay, if I could just increase my income this much, how much more home could I afford? Or if I know interest rates are here today, what happens if they were to just drop 1%? What does that do to the affordability of the home that I could get into? If I could save up a little bit extra capital, I could put a little bit more down, how much more home would that allow me to afford? What this will empower you to do is say, okay, here's where I am today. Here's maybe where I need to be a year from now, 18 months from now, two years from now. Okay, now I have a clear path to get to where I need to be to be able to get into a home. So just like you said, a little bit of due diligence, a little bit of extra effort, a little bit of planning on your end can go a long way. So use the tool and then also go to moneyguy.com slash resources and check out our home buying checklist. Because for most people, when it comes time to buy a house, this will be the single most expensive thing you ever buy in your entire life. So you want to make sure that you do it well. All you're doing is likely signing up for hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. So make sure you understand what it is you're getting into and make sure you understand the boxes that you should check so that you can make this decision decision as wisely as possible. Yeah, this one, it's such a big life it's decision. A big it's definitely worth measuring twice, cut once, using our checklist mm-hmm. as a valuable resource. Now, this leads to the last one. And I hate putting them against each other, but I think it's very important, as I kind of led with this in the beginning, I think there's a, a, a feeling under the surface, and maybe it's not even under the surface, it's just out there for everybody to see, but there is the myth that millennials have it substantially harder than the boomers did. Yeah, we hear about this all the time, that uh, how it, with the older generations, the boomer generation, you could get a house with a white picket fence and you can only have one spouse working and and uh, a tank of gas only cost a nickel and the cost of college could be done with a part-time job and uh, and it was just easy, right? While a lot of those things have changed, yes, college is more expensive. Most families now have to have two incomes. Gas and groceries have gotten more expensive. There are some huge advantages that millennial hat. I love Brian. I was going to give you credit for this. And you said it right there. You have this optimist mindset. And you've always told me this, that we have, we all have a voice in our head that can control the way that we view the world and the way that we make decisions. And if you can learn how to frame that voice in a positive trajectory, it's amazing the impact you can have in your life. Because what, as a millennial, you cannot do, you can't go change what the boomers did. Yeah. And you can't go change what the Xers did. And you can't go change what anyone before has done. All you can change is your current circumstance and the current deck of cards you have to play with. And so one of the things I would encourage millennials to think through is, what are my advantages? What are the things right now where the deck is stacked in my favor 
that I can take advantage of so that my future looks just as bright as I feel like some of my previous generation's futures looked. Yeah, and the first thing, if, if we're trying to name off the things that I think younger investors have over older investors, there's never been a better time to be an investor. Mm -hmm. I even think about my own journey is there used to be all these commissions you'd have to pay. You couldn't do anything direct. You had to go through middlemen or buy direct through a broker and they charge you a commission of 5% mm -hmm. on it. Now you can buy index funds. Yep. Anybody can go on the internet and you can go to the biggest providers of index funds is like Fidelity Investments, Charles mm -hmm. Schwab, Vanguard. Everything is on the internet. You can set it and forget it. There's so many things to be thankful for that it's never been easier to start building wealth today. Uh, how about this? Some of the sexiest, most attractive account savings vehicles, investing vehicles out there weren't even around way back when. If you think about this, yeah. 401k plans introduced in 1978. The Roth IRA that we all get so excited about came out in 1998 and health savings accounts, which are triple tax advantage, sometimes even quadruple tax advantage, didn't even come around until 2004. So now, more than ever, there are opportunities for you to take advantage of these savings vehicles and really build very efficient, tax efficient wealth over the long term. Yeah, and think about 2023, wasn't that the year that now 529s can become yep, Roth. I mean, that's right. So I do think there are some advantages that to to being younger and being a millennial when it comes to investing. Now, let's pivot because we're investors. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we we've already shared. Hopefully, you guys have gotten excited. A little bit goes a long way. I don't care if it's twenty dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars. Make something happen today. But I think it goes beyond just saving and investing. Mm -hmm. What are some other advantages that millennials have? Well, here's a here's a beautiful one. We grew up with technology. A lot of the older generations, a lot of the older Xers, a lot of the baby boomers. Oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, the Where are you going Xers, with the Xers? You know, they were around pre-internet. They were around pre-personal computer. They were around pre-cell phone. They were around pre fill in the blank. This is all second nature to us. We grew up with it. So as the world continues to advance, as the world continues continues to change as the job market continues to evolve because that was what we were formed by, it's a lot easier for us to adapt and learn new skill sets and take advantage of those changes in technology. I think that's something that millennials don't often think about, but when a new app comes along or a new software or a new program or a new protocol, we're able to pick it up fairly quickly because we've had to do that our entire lives. For generations that existed before that, I don't know that the learning, cor learning curve is quite as gradual. I think it's a whole whole lot steeper. I'm willing to agree with that. I'm old enough. I'm not a boomer, as I've shared <laughs> multiple times, because I don't want to be grouped in with that. But I am a, a person that's had foot uh, a foot both in old school as well as the new technology world. And it does get harder mm -hmm. as things move. And I think younger people adapt easier and faster. And that's a very powerful skill for the future. Um, let's talk about another one, Bo. I know as you get older, and I know about my, I think about my life expectancy and mortality and mm -hmm. other things. You don't get to take it with you. Right. So what's going to happen to all the assets and all the resources that the boomers have built up? Yeah, if you, if you think about it, if, if the boomers were able to build all this wealth and they had this easy path to wealth and they've accumulated all these resources, eventually that's going to have to go somewhere. Eventually that's going to have to pass down to prior generations. And so it looks like over the next decade, there's likely going to be a massive transition of wealth from one generation to the next generation, whether that be down to the X generation or even down to the millennial generation. So these resources are going to go somewhere. And even if not to you directly, you're thinking, oh, well, my, you know, I don't have a lineage where I'm going to have a huge inheritance. That's not necessarily what I mean. A lot of those dollars are going to flow back into the economy. They're well, how about their houses? Their I mean, houses think about are people. Come on the market. So, you know, people, when you, there is going to be, they're not going to need these houses. That's there right. is going to be a circulation of resources, I think, just as people age out, pass away. The, the, it's just part of the cleansing mm -hmm. process of this. And millennials will be the beneficiary of a lot of that. And then uh, here's the other thing I think half the part of finding a solution is recognizing that there's actually a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think millennials have a, a very are very aware, based upon a lot of the research and the data that's out there, that it's on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Social Security is not going to be your salvation and solution. Pensions aren't you can't count on pensions anymore. So you know where the cold, hard facts are, but that allows you, since you can't control all the other stuff, you get to be the solution to your financial life and maximizing all those opportunities. Uh, here's the deal. We know that... Building wealth 
is not easy. It's it's it, the world that we live in is not easy, but the steps are relatively simple. The ingredients are relatively simple. If you can have discipline and you can live on less than you make and generate money, and you can apply that money to investing and saving over time, you can build wealth even if you are a millennial. Even if you're someone who's 27 to 42 years old, in this world in which we live, it's not complicated. You just have to have the fortitude to make the decisions that I'm gonna start today making decisions that are gonna put myself on the trajectory to be where I wanna be in the future. There were a lot of things I just covered that you can you can see how younger generations can look at the boomers and older generations and be jealous mm -hmm. because of how easy a lot of these things proceed to be. If I could be honest and tell you what are the older generations looking at you mm -hmm. and are jealous of, it's going to be time. That's right. So you have today to make the decision that you're not going to squander that valuable resource of time just take a little bit of today for that great, big, beautiful tomorrow, and I think you'll be amazed at how that small little incremental decision that you don't even miss is going to change your life to the point that your 50-year-old self is going to come to you one day and give you a big, sloppy bear hug that's wet with happy tears and be like, thank you, thank you, thank you for making that decision. I'm your host, Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen, Money Guy Team, out of here.